On today's episode, we're going to talk about words, words, words. More specifically, English words that Germans use wrong. And well, the result could be rather humorous. Hello, human lieblings. I'm Madi, science fiction and fantasy author who's been living in southern Germany since 2014. Today, we're going to talk about English words that Germans use incorrectly. I mean, they're technically incorrect in the, from the perspective of a native English speaker. It's natural in this globalized world that we borrow words from different languages. In the US, we borrow German words and use them wrong as well. But today, we're going to focus on the English ones, especially because if we are ever allowed to go out in public again, and you want to travel to the States, you might want to be careful not to use these words with Americans. But before we get started, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell if you haven't already. Here on Adventures of Lamadi, we talk about writing, living abroad, and everything in between. So let's do this list. Body bag. A body bag in Germany is more like a sling bag. It is something that's just slung over your shoulder. Uh, we would refer to that more as like a fanny pack. A body bag in the States or with English speakers is where you put a dead body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't be careful with that. Public viewing. Uh, public viewing in Germany that is usually, for example, if a if a, an important game or important match is going to be shown on television, then usually it could be done at, at say at a restaurant. They're going to host a public viewing where everybody can go and watch it together in public. In the states, a public viewing usually refers to a funeral. The public viewing is the viewing of the body. Yeah. Shitstorm. Um, the Shitstorm in Germany, it usually just means it's kind of a social media frenzy, a social media backlash. Uh, not quite like cancel culture because Germany doesn't quite have cancel culture the same way the U.S. does. But uh, at the same time, though, shitstorm in the States means something really bad. Like it's 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 bad. It's very bad. Street workers. In Germany, that means a social worker, somebody who works on the street to help people who are on the street, you know, have a better life. Uh, in, in, this, in, in English speaking countries, that means prostitute because you're working the streets also, but for different reasons. Casting show, casting show. That is in the States, in the, I would say the States, but because I don't want to exclude other English speaking countries, but a casting show in Germany refers to a reality show. We don't call it a casting show just because we, the idea, I mean, it is a similar concept. Yes, when you're casting a show or you're casting a project, you are finding the right people for the project, which is what you do essentially live in the beginning stages of of a casting show or of a re reality performance show like American Idol or So You Think You Can Dance. But yeah, we just don't we just don't call it a casting show. It's a reality show. It just falls under the overall umbrella of reality show. Smoking. Smoking refers to a tux in Germany, but in English speaking countries, smoking is smoking. <laughs> and I believe it, it does refer to old smoking jackets, uh, which actually look very different than a tux. <laughs> Uh, but uh, essentially that is where the uh, the idea of a smoking came from. Beamer. Beamer is projector in Germany. For us, especially in the States, a beamer usually means a BMW. Handy. In Germany, it's a cell phone. In the States, specifically, it's usually something sexual. <laughs> Partner look. So partner look is, is is actually very funny. Um, there is a video I'm gonna I'm gonna link up top. It's one of my one of my favorite kind of like jokes about Germans. It's called Times Square coats. It's from SNL, where they talk about having like very German coats. Um, personally, I think it's funny. Like I said, I will link it. But it does tease the idea of 
of whole families wearing the same coats. That's one of the jokes that they talk about. And the idea of wearing the same outfit uh, as somebody, it doesn't necessarily have to be your partner or a relative or your, you know, it could be your, it could be your friends as well. That is called a partner look. In English, we would call that like being twinsies or yeah, uh, clothes twins or, or uh, stalker. I don't know. It, it, there, <laughs> <laughs> things we talk about that we would refer to takeaway uh, takeaway is in in english in the state specifically we call take out because you're taking it out of the restaurant as opposed to i mean taking it taking away from the restaurant uh, i feel it it's not necessarily wrong but when you're saying you're taking away, it, it has a connotation of stealing. You were taking it away from something. As opposed to you taking it out, you're just just taking it out. It doesn't have that same connotation, but it's the little things. Drive in versus drive through. In Germany, we would, they, they would refer to, if you're going to say McDonald's or whatever, you want to go through the drive through, they call it a drive in. And I think part of it does have to do with the fact that the TH in through is hard for a lot of Germans to pronounce. So they just say drive in. While a drive in in the States is what would be called in German uh, an autokino. So it's uh, the, you know, the place where you go outside with your, with your car and you watch a movie because you're driving in. <laughs> Safe. Safe in German means definitely or sure. As opposed to safe, which means secure it, in English. Makeup. Makeup in English naturally is the whole shebang, but in German it actually refers to specifically foundation. Mixer. Mixer in Germany is uh, a blender for us in English, uh, though the actual word mixer in the States would be referring to like a party where you're kind of mixing people together. We don't really use that phrase anymore. It's very like old timey wimey, but that's at least that's we, if you say mixer to a, a, an American specifically, that's what we we're going to think of <laughs> old mixers, high school mixers. Yeah. Yeah. I'm that old old timer. Old timer is classic in English. So a classic car or a classic uh, a tractor, for example, something that is over 25 years old in Germany is referred to as an old timer. In English-speaking countries, we refer to them as classics. Cutter. Cutter mean, in Germany means a film editor. I'm on the other hand, I, this is, I guess I'm, okay, so this is, this is very, very specific, but I studied in the town of Bloomington, Indiana, and cutter for us actually refers to the folks that work in limestone cutting. So that area of Indiana is uh, the, the capital essentially of limestone, which is actually a huge chunk of the buildings and monuments in Washington, DC were made with Indiana limestone or specifically limestone from Bloomington area. So I it was never a townie. I was never from Bloomington. So I was always, you know, an outsider, a student or whatever. Those who come from that area and have that limestone background would then be referred to as a cutter totally random. There is a whole movie on this called Breaking Away, which did win an Oscar for Best Original Screenplay. And it was actually filmed in Bloomington. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> but it does actually talk about the dynamics between the out-of-towners, uh, university students, and the local cutters. Home office. In English, you would say, I'm simply working from home. But in Germany, you refer to it as home office. Wellness. In, in English, that's just a state of being well, but in Germany, that is what you would call a spa. Shooting. This is a one you really have to be careful with. It means a photo shoot. So I understand where the word comes from, but especially in the States, if you say shooting, that has a completely different connotation. It is a photo shoot, not shooting. And last but not least, toast. <sighs> toast is what in Germany is referred to uh, what we would call sandwich bread. 
They call it toast because, of course, I feel like everybody naturally just eats it toasted, but it doesn't actually become toast until it is toasted. Before then, it is sandwich bread. I, you know, yes, some Americans would say it's bread, and then Germans, of course, would counter say, no, that's not bread. You, you know, you heathens, that's not bread. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's not. It's not bread specifically. It does fall under the umbrella of bread, but technically it's what we would call sandwich bread because we use that kind of bread to make either, you know, peanut butter sandwiches, ham sandwiches, club sandwiches, whatever. It is sandwich bread. Then once it's toasted, it is toasted <laughs> sandwich bread. Or then you can call it toast. It makes no sense to call it toast if it's not been toasted. I'm sorry. I will die mad. <laughs> what do you guys think? What English words have you heard Germans using wrongly? And if you're interested, I can do one of German words that English speakers use incorrectly as well. Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and give this video a thumbs up. It lets me and YouTube know that you like this kind of content and you wanna see more. Please leave me a comment if you have any questions or if there's a certain topic you'd like to see on this channel. If you want fun escapism, my space fantasy The God Queen is available in ebook, paperback, and hardback. The sequel, The Last Imperator, is also available for pre-order. Also, don't forget to sign up for the TLI pre-sale giveaway. If you sign up for my newsletter, you get the first six chapters of The God Queen, as well as the free prequel short story, The Night and the Goddess. So sign up! Also, if you've read any of my work or the work of your favorite author, please leave a review. They really help us authors out, and it is free to do so. And don't forget to connect with me on social media, whether it is through Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. And that's it. Until next time, adieu!